change matrix is an important part of the DRBFM process. Basically, all the steps that you did up to this point are used to serve the change matrix and to be able to build the change matrix. When you have listing all your parts and doing the visualization and calling out numbers and letters for each part, uh, creating the functions list and so on. Those are all used in the change matrix. So basically, if we take a look at the change matrix here, it's consisting of X and Y directions. So firstly, you have the list of components. That's uh, this part over here. Then you have the list of functions. So you list function one, function two, function three, and so on and so on. So list of components, you will include a little detail. So you'll include the category of that component and you will include the baseline design and the new design as well. So you have your components over here and you have the list of functions over here. So you already created the list of components and the hierarchy list previously. Now you list them here, all of them. Then you list uh, your functions as well. What's the functionality of each part? Then you will take one component from the list of components and you take one function from the list of functions in this way you are telling okay how does the function f1 interacting with the component c1 is affecting the overall uh, progress of the system if it does affect the progress of the system so we can see in the legend here you can use any legend you want but mainly you need to indicate one symbol to say there is no concern with that interaction and there is another symbol saying there is a potential concern in that interaction and a third one saying there is an A rank or a very important concern uh, showing up from that interaction and you move so on and so on and so on with the process so this way you will go back later to your change matrix and you will look at potential concerns and trying to see is this still a potential concern or is it not a concern at all? If it's not a concern at all, we would give it a green or O. If it is a concern, uh, A rank concern, we give it A rank with a red color and so on. And uh, this way, you can tell eventually which is the confirmed concern and which is a no concern. So in the first, it's fine to start with putting some potential concerns. Uh, but eventually, before you finalize your DRBFM sheet, you want to make sure your change matrix having either concern or no concern, because all potential concerns should be addressed as moving forward in the process. Of course, that's happening through a lot of meetings with the design review members and um, talking about those potential concerns. Are they still concerns or no concern? Then you move forward. So if we want to talk about the concern discovery so you need to find the potential failure mode and that's happening through studying the interactions between the change point and the function list each change point how does it interact with uh, function list as we said so you have component c1 how does c1 interact with function one and how does it interact with function two function three okay how does C2 interact with function one? How does it interact with function two? How does it interact with function three? And so on. Here we can see a screenshot for a real DRBFM sheet showing up the change matrix. So as you can see, it's a kind of Excel sheet style. On the Y axis, you're having your changes and the list of components. And on the x-axis, you have all the functions that you listed in your function list. So you can tell, okay, function number four, how does it interact with component number two? So function number four, how does it interact with component number two? Then you go down here, that's number two. And that's function number four. So you can see here, is it a concern 
or a no concern or a confirmed concern and so on so you identify the areas of impact between every change and every function changes on the y-axis functions on the x-axis and you see the interactions so when you look at the overall matrix then you can generate a kind of bigger idea on what's going on and how those components are doing and where I need to invest more time and more uh, more kind of research on the potential concerns and where is my um, confirmed concerns so you can tell if your progress of development is going in the right direction or not. So we have an example here. That's the change matrix in simplest form. So you have changes and you have your functions. For changes, you have items or components or parts. That's the wall thickness. The old was four millimeters. Now in the new design, it's three millimeters. So we are going from four to three. And the functions, we have internal pressure of 30 kPa as a max, so 30 kilopascal as a max. And the, we have another function, store fuel. Okay, I can see how the internal pressure of 30 k kilopascal uh, is interacting with the wall thickness moving from 4 to 3 millimeters. In this case, we're saying, okay, the volume is reduced, so can the design handle that high pressure or it doesn't matter? So you can see it's a concern, it's not a concern. If O, you indicate a relationship between the decreased thickness and the internal pressure, or you can indicate a note for the key concerns as a future reminder. So not only you use as a kind of a, a symbol, but as well, you can put your own notes in Excel sheet, adding a note. Then when you hover over it, you can say, okay, uh, this exact interaction is having this and this detail. So in this case, we write rupture, that means the main concern is having a crack uh, in our design. Then if you put and slash a, which is like not assigned, in this way that means there, it's like ignore it. There's, there's no indication of concern, no concern, or potential concern. So it's like maybe you can put that sign to be able to come back to it later and identify it as a final result. Now we have a potential concern example. So you have a design attribute, attribute description. You have the change matrix crossed with the function matrix. And we have a failure phenomenon. Now we have a rigidity as a factor. We have a strength and we have the seat comfort. Again, we are using just only a random examples. So here you can see rigidity regarding that we have a phenomenon of looseness during operation too light at start of travel so low rigidity then for strength you have higher fastening stress at tank band attachment and deterioration over time that's a poor strength then you have the seat is too soft or hard or lack of support underneath in case we're talking about a cart seat so that's that's the kind of uh, failure mode if you want to add uh, in your change matrix if you want to add any kind of comments so you can say rigidity, strength, seat comfort, or you can say uh, length, you can say volume, you can say whatever you want, and you give your note in details. So you break down the failure outcome and you clarify the phenomena in your next documents. And as well in your DRBFM sheets, you have a sheet called references. You can always mark like number one or hash number one, then you can go back to references, put hash number one, and give all the details about that exact note. So again, for potential concern discovery, you, you look at interactions, and these interactions should be carefully considered for both past and um, for, for past problems and for the problems that are expected in the future. You need to include a note of the condition, phenomena, timing of the event for future reference and for root causing analysis. And eventually you seek input from the experienced member on your change matrix and trying to give their feedback and always be welcoming of the new suggestions. Probably some of the concerns that you think it's a A rank concern or a high level concern will be no concern at all based on the experience, based on the feedback from the experts. And some of these components could be 
a concern while it was no concern in the past. So that kind of open-minded discussion and getting the inputs from the experts always very important in change matrix. You should spend enough time in the change matrix before you move any further to make sure you captured all the concerns that are happening from the interaction between the components and the function of the system.